Why, hello everybody, it's Corbin, and today I'm going to go ahead and talk about another yaoi. This one's called White Brand, and it is by, what is her name, Yuka Nita. Alright, the artwork in this is very pretty. Now, before I start rambling, I have to catch myself, I'm going to go ahead and read the back, and we'll go over it. Alright. Kashiki and Izuru were best friends as little boys. After all, they're exactly the same age. But when a heartbreaking family tragedy causes Kashika's world for uh, world forever, oh, that's a bad translation. He pushes away all of the wonderful things that used to fill his carefree life days with joy, including the confused and hurt Izura. Many years later, the two boys find that they're students at the same school. Has time healed Kashiki's wounds, or does he need a helping hand to lead him out of the darkness and into the light of friendship? White Brand plunges heart headfirst into the dizzy, dangerous world of men who must challenge convention in order to stand on their own two feet. Sometimes, estranged cousins must be put the past behind them in order to reconnect and sometimes prejudices that have existed for decades still take their toll on innocence. No two stories in White Brand are exactly the same, and each gorgeous couple is as unique as their special passion. Now, in White Brand, there are five different short stories. I've said it once, I'm going to say it again. I'm not a huge fan of short stories when it comes to romances, unless it's really, really, really well-rounded, like Eerie Query, and a couple others are. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a summation of each story, then really talk about how I feel about it, because it's not bad, it's just not, for me, because they're so short, the best thing ever. So now, the first story is, of course, the title of the book's sake, it's White Brand. Now, White Brand is two kissing cousins who, after father's killed, must fight to become close friends again after years of estrangement. Now, it's an okay story, it's good, it's well drawn, and literally we follow through and we figure out why one of the cousins decided not to be friends with the other anymore. And it's okay. It's not the best story I've ever read in my life, but it's not the worst. It is decent. It is by far one of my more favorites in this one, but not my favorite. Um, the second story is called Tea Land. A foreign transplant in Japan is studying traditional tr Japanese art underneath a master. And every time I want to remember what he's studying, I can't remember and I can never find it when I look. Um, lacquer. Japanese traditional Japanese lacquer. And he is very, very good at it. The master very much so appreciates his work, but nobody exactly accepts him because he's not Japanese. The master's son falls in love with the foreign transplant, and they have a whirlwind romance sort of thing, kind of fighting with each other, saying, no, we will love each other, no, we won't, it can't happen, I'm not Japanese. And it ends up they become brothers because the master adopts the foreign transplant, and that's where it kind of gets a little awkward for me, but it's still very good. So, that one, it's okay. It's a middle ground story. It's not going to entirely make me feel warm and fuzzy at the end of the day. It's very cute. It is cute. And it is very kitschy. If you do like those sort of romances where you not everyone's going to be accepted, then the second story, Teal End, would be good for you. Now, the third story is perhaps the most, not necessarily confusing, but not my favorite. It's called Asta La Vista, baby. It's about three actors who live together. Two of the actors are a couple, a gay couple, and one of them is the third wheel. The third wheel one is a very fishy face. You know what that means? It means it's a very girly face and plays both male and female parts and is very renowned for it. And when we meet him, he is doing a story slash movie role slash theater role where he's playing a woman who can never have children. And she ends up 
somehow procuring children and going nuts and nearly killing one of the kids or something. I can't really remember that detail. And he roughly follows the same path. He borrows his sister's kid. Horrific things happen. Actors lose jobs. Things get interesting. Kid doesn't end up hurt or anything. But he pretty much better understands the character he was playing's mindset. The next story, which I don't know why it's crammed in the book, is called Exhibition Painting. This one is my favorite out of the all. This one feels like the most well-rounded story. There aren't many loopholes. There isn't a huge gap of time completely skipped. Now, in Exhibition Painting, we run into a homeless man who is rescued by a millionaire who can sense people's emotions and feelings and true intentions. And it's kind of like he can read people's minds, but not exactly. So we deal with that and it's very, very good. He likes the homeless man because he's very honest. The homeless man can read people's emotions and what makes them sad and happy and just the emotions. So he ends up bringing the homeless man home with him and they end up having not a love affair, it, that doesn't happen right away, that's actually very towards the end of the short story. And what pretty much happens is they uncover a, a, oh god, a fake painting, um, I can't remember what they're called, but pretty much a art ring, a fake art ring, counterfeit art ring, there we go, with a whole bunch of forgeries that were part of the guy's father's collection, which is why his parents were killed. It's really, really a good story. It's really confusing with the way I told it, but it's very, very good. It's my favorite. The last story is One Size Fits All. Yes. And it's about this super short guy who loves super tall women. And he's looking, like, flipping through Vogue. He sees this beautiful model. Then he looks across the way at his neighbor's apartment, which he's, like, in this compact sort of housing situation. And right across the way from his balcony, less than, like, a foot distance, the super tall models in the apartment cross the way. He waves to her. He tries to talk to her. She kind of ignores him. So he jumps from his balcony to her balcony. She lets him in. It turns out that the she is actually he. It's a male model who portrays as female. And the story is very, very cute. The model's tired of being alone, so she accepts him and leaves him a key to her house. And that's how the story pretty much ends. It is a... Not the best story, but not... No, it is the worst out of all of these stories. But it's very cute. All of them are very, very well drawn. They are very, very nice. It's nothing against any of this why I'm gonna rate it a... I almost want to say two stars, but it's closer to two and a half, three stars out of five. And the reason why is I just don't like short stories. And especially not short stories with huge plot holes or huge spans of times so just magically skip. So that's pretty much where I'm looking at it. It is still very, very good. I do recommend it as filler if you need something that's fast and quick and easy to read. But honestly, it is not something I'll probably come back to and read in its entirety. And yeah, so that's White Brand, you guys. Two and a half, three stars out of five. I don't know what else to tell you about it really besides its collection of short stories that only really one of them is good. Well, two of them are good. The rest of them are okay. So if you guys have any questions, leave questions, comments, leave it down below. Let me know. Remember to like, favorite, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.